Good morning everyone and welcome to today's service on Sunday the 24th of May the seventh Sunday of Easter and the Sunday after Ascension Hallelujah Christ is risen he is risen indeed Hallelujah now whatever time of day you pick the service up it doesn't really matter whether it's Sunday at 9.30, 11am, 3pm, it doesn't matter, as people in different places at different times, we are coming together as a group, as a community of faith. So wherever you are, we gather in this place and we gather to listen, to speak, to pray to worship, to be with God because we know it is out of God's authority, it is out of God's love that we live. Hallelujah! Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah! We come just for a moment to think about those things that maybe with hindsight we shouldn't have done, we shouldn't have said. And we just bring those things now to God. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption. There are times, Lord, when we forget your pain and we choose to stay in the realm of the evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we can say with confidence that you were raised from death to bring us new life. And yet so often, Lord, we prefer the comfort of the familiar. And there's so many empty promises of this world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father. Your God and our God. And you plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and for entry into the fullness of his presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And the Church's prayer for today. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your Church on earth with power and compassion. That's all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And next will be our reading which is from John chapter 17. The words will be on the screen. And following this Joyce will then bring us her thoughts on this passage. Today's reading is from John chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life 
to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. I love the season of Eastertide, the period from Easter Day to Pentecost, because we're waiting in anticipation to see what God has in store next. I wonder what Jesus' disciples were thinking. How were they waiting? We know from our Gospel reading in John that Jesus had prepared them before he was crucified because this prayer that Jesus prayed, known as the High Priestly Prayer, was at the time after the Last Supper, but before his time in God, the Garden of Gethsemane. You could almost be forgiven for thinking this was after his resurrection, but no. Jesus has been preparing his disciples for his death and resurrection and what was to follow. But no matter how much we are prepared for something, when it actually happens, it's very different. As we come today, the Sunday after Jesus' ascension, his disciples had been with him since his resurrection. So imagine their shock, horror, when even though Jesus had been preparing them to the fact that he wouldn't be with them on this earth always, when he ascended to heaven, they found themselves in utter confusion. They had been able to be with Jesus in his resurrected body, so they had him with them all the time. And then, poof, he's gone, never to be seen again. I can certainly relate to the other com utter confusion they are going through with what's going in on in our lives today. And I'm sure you can all have something similar experiences, something we've never experienced before. Our whole world has changed. I haven't been out for nine weeks, so I have to ask people what it's like out there in the supermarkets. Describe it to me. We see on the news every day how different people are reacting to what's going on. But one certainty I know is that God is in it with us. His faithfulness to us never changes. His promises are always there. Let's contrast the confusion of Jesus' disciples with the confidence Jesus has in them in today's reading. Jesus is full of confidence in the work his Father had given him to do and full of confidence he has in his disciples. We are Jesus' disciples as well, so let's see what he is saying to his Father about us. He says in today's reading from John, chapter 17, verse 6, he's praying to his Father and says, I have made your name to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me 
and they have kept your word. And again in verse 10 Jesus says, All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. So on this Sunday after Jesus' ascension into heaven, his disciples are still in confusion on what's going to happen next. Behind them is Jesus' death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension into heaven. In front, the unknown. As someone put it, they feel in no man's land. At this point in time, they don't know what's going to happen next or how long they will be in no man's land. As they know, all they know is the physical form of Jesus seems to have finally left them in a very spectacular way. They're in no man's land waiting. And they don't know how long they will have to wait. For the next part of their life will be very important. I think we can all relate in some ways to what the disciples are feeling. We're waiting, sitting in God's waiting room. Waiting for six, six weeks, we were all told to stay inside, protect the NHS and save lives. Then there's a little glimmer of hope, but in the hope there is more confusion and anxiety. COVID-19 is unseen, it's out there. It was only a few months ago that life was what we saw as normal. So imagine the disciples, until four years ago, they were living their normal lives with their families. And then Jesus came. He called each one of them individually to follow him. So their norm of living with their families and friends in their villages and towns, going about their daily lives as usual. Then along comes Jesus and completely changes all that. And for about four years, they had experienced things they would never have imagined. They did everything together with Jesus, so nothing, nothing should surprise them. They loved him and he continued to love them always as, and he loves us as he loved them. All of his disciples at one time or another had promised to die for him and yet they all failed him, some worse than others. But that's what make, made them human beings and makes us human beings. They had lived through the tension, through the mounting danger and finally the terrible execution in Jerusalem that ended the life of their Lord and the loss of that terrible sense of loss when someone you love dies suddenly. And three days later there was the explosion of the resurrection and they've been with him again for six weeks and then poof, he's gone again, never to be seen again. Yet again their loss was great, maybe not as sharp as before, but nevertheless very bitter. And some of you may have heard me say before that we are in the privileged position 2,000 years later to know what comes next. But for Jesus' disciples, they're in no man's land, they haven't got a clue what's going to happen to them. As I said earlier, we feel as if we're living in no man's land at the moment. Our lives are filled with uncertainty. We don't know what life will be like in the future. When will it be safe for us to worship together physically in our church buildings instead of virtually? When will it be safe in us to see our families and friends? We may have these desires and anxieties, but God knows all about them. Jesus' disciples had their fair share of them, and Jesus understood them just as he understands his disciples of today you and me. If you are anxious or troubled, talk to God. He's always there. Talk to someone, to a friend. Don't bottle your anxieties up. I'm sure Jesus' disciples suffered with anxiety with all that was happening in their lives. They talked with each other, shared their feelings, how afraid they were, what to do next, what is going to happen to them. That's how as humans we react to things we have no control of. So as Jesus ascended into heaven, his disciples had no control of it. They couldn't go with him, so they just had to wait. As we look forward to the day of Pentecost and prepare ourselves with prayer, using our prayer journals which we should have received, which started on Ascension Day, 
And as we prepare to wait for Pentecost, we are asked to write the, write the names of five people we would pray for throughout this period to come to know Jesus. We need to write them and name them in our journal as we continue to pray for them. As we're waiting for Pentecost and as we pray for our five people, we may want to pray for ourselves first with the words from a prayer of Richard of Chichester, which I will use now to close. May I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. Thank you, Joyce, for your message today. For next, we'll have Adrian, who's going to lead us in our prayers. And following Adrian will be a message from Ian Harvey. Now, Ian Harvey came to Trinity in February this year, and he represents the Cambilio Trust. And this is something that Holy Trinity supports. So his message will follow the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. God of health and wholeness, we thank you with gratitude for the skill and dedication of our NHS staff, our medics, police officers, police staff, fire station staff, and all those other frontline workers at this current time. We pray that they may be sustained, rewarded and encouraged in the tasks they are given to undertake. We also pray for all those at the moment who are dealing with any COVID-19 issues. We pray for mortuary staff, funeral direct staff, and all those organised in organisation of funerals. Give them the strength to carry on with these roles. We, can, we pray for all our clergy and clergy throughout the world who are facing these issues on a daily basis. Bless them, give them strength and guide them. We pray for key workers that they may continue in the roles they are carrying out to support them. They can keep strong for one another. They can encourage one another. And for their families also. God of health and wholeness. As we come to the end of Mental Health Week, we think of those who are suffering with various issues of mental health. Those who during the COVID-19 outbreak have been furloughed from work or made redundant. We pray that you will give them your strength, that they can reach out for where help they're needed. If they're suffering with mental health issues because of these, that they can ask, not be ashamed. We thank you for those who work in the field of mental health. Thank you that they have patience and kindness. We pray that they're enabled to, to see the deep value of every human life. Perhaps if we take a few moments to think of anyone who we know who is suffering from mental health. And just think about that person. If we think about them and look and see if Jesus coming alongside them. They're suffering from depression or the mental illnesses. And remember that Jesus had particular concern for those who experienced depression. See him there with that person, now, alongside them, comforting them. God of health and wholeness, we know that our own well-being depends not only on the functioning of our bodies, but on a host of emotional 
the social factors. We pray at this time, especially when so many of us are isolated from going out to meeting together. Thank you for the gifts of friendship, kindness, community spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the IT, the development mode of IT, and of social media, meaning that we can keep in contact with one another. We can hold services. We can record messages to one another and support one another on a daily basis. May we notice where there are social needs in our community. Those who are able to, may we try to meet them. As time goes on, maybe we should become maybe we could become more responsible as citizens, both of our earthly community and of the kingdom of heaven. And we can seek to bring the light and life of Christ to any and all people in our neighbourhood. Lord, we pray for the families and friends of those who mourn for loved ones. We pray for those who have recently died. We ask you that you will bless and strengthen all those families and friends. We pray, Lord, that all those who are known to us personally that you will keep them in your love and comfort. Lord, we pray that you will continue to guide our leaders, our government, and the governments of other nations. We will encourage our governments to make the right decisions at the right times, working together towards a safer future for us all. Where we will have a new norm, that new norm we will surely be able to gather together once again. Lord, we just pray all these in your name. Amen. Bringing our prayers and praises into one, we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi Kimberly O friends, uh, given I can't come out to you at the moment I thought that I would make a short uh, film just to give you a quick update as to how the work at Kimberly O is going at the moment. We've been hearing some uh, concerning news from Lubumbashi over the last few weeks with an increase in uh, violence and armed robbery. Unfortunately one of our own carers at Kimberly O uh, that looks after the girls in one of the girls' houses. Her own house was uh, was burgled the other night and she lost quite a few of her belongings. And uh, so we're really sorry to hear this news about her and also the city as well in general. Uh, this is coming on the back of uh, weeks uh, where the food prices have been quadrupling uh, because of them closing the border with Zambia to protect the city from coronavirus. Uh, up until a couple of weeks ago, there were no cases of coronavirus in Lubumbashi at all. Uh, however, um, in the last two weeks, the numbers have gone from zero up to nine. Uh, and in the country as a whole, there are over 1,200 cases now. So um, it's a concerning situation. Many people are finding it hard to make ends meet. 
people don't have the luxury to stay inside uh, in their homes um, to protect themselves because they have to get out there to to make uh, to find uh, money for food every day, uh, and the healthcare system certainly isn't uh, able or will, won't be able to cope if the if the pandemic um, expands in Lubumbashi. Uh, we're also seeing more numbers of children on the streets. Generally, we had to shut our own day centre down because of coronavirus restrictions, but our team is going out onto the streets to take hot food to the children to assess their needs. Um, some of those children that were deemed uh, vulnerable and at risk have been brought into uh, some of our houses, into our homes, which is really good. But of course, there are many more on the, on the streets that we just aren't, don't have room to accommodate. Last week, a team from, um, from Lubumbashi University went out uh, to assess uh, the, the medical needs of the children as well. Uh, which was uh, really good to work together with them in partnership. John Bosco and the team are doing an amazing job to keep everything going at this really, really challenging uh, time. Some positive news though, the school building, which we laid the foundation stone for last year when I was out there with the team for the 10th anniversary, that the walls are going up uh, really well. We've reached the top band now uh, that holds the whole building together. Uh, and then that will enable us to put the roof on uh, as and when we have the, the finances to do that. So really positive and I hope to be able to bring you more news about that. If you'd like to see any pictures, please do look at our Facebook page uh, for, to get some updated news there. Uh, yeah, just please uh, keep in touch with us. Thank you so much for all of your support. We have uh, launched a coronavirus appeal due to the increasing costs for uh, the service at this time with the increase of food costs and uh, all of the other needs of the children at the moment. Um, and I will send the link with this film. If any of you are able to give, that would be much appreciated. Although we, of course, realise uh, that at the moment, many, many people are financially uh, challenged and finding this a difficult time. We do hope you're all right and keeping well. Thank you so much for all you do for us as a service in Lubumbashi. And please do keep in touch. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the service today and our time together. And just a few notices to finish on. Both on Wednesday, at half past ten, there'll be a Zoom coffee morning, so hope to see you there. The password will come through on Skype or Ask Andrea. And then at half past seven that evening, there'll be a prayer meeting. Again, the password will come through on Skype or Ask Andrea. And I hope that during this time between Ascension and Pentecost, which is next Sunday, that your prayer journals, thy kingdom come. You are finding them useful as you pray for your five Jordan this time. So we'll finish with the blessing. And I pray that God's love and mercy will always be with you. And may Christ lead you into the joy of the kingdom. And may the Spirit deepen your faith love and hope and the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you today and always amen and thank you